Good afternoon and welcome to the last unit of our course MMPA002 Human Resource Development. Uh, we are at the end of the course and uh, students whatever we have understood is a conceptual framework of HRD, Human Resource Development. We have understood the basic aspects of human resource development and how this human resource development helps the individuals to develop their competencies and commitment at the same time in parallel the organizational development aspects are also being taken care of where the culture of the organization the climate of organization is being also taken care of by human resource development we have also understood how different uh, aspects of human resource development such as career planning succession planning uh, the performance management system we have also understood the career counseling, performance mentoring, you know, performance feedback and the way we implement all of those tools to enhance the competitive environment of the organization by enhancing the competences and commitment level of the employees in the organization. So with that conceptual framework, today in our session, we are going to discuss how these HRD initiatives are being taken by different organizations around the world and what is the significance of HRD for the different verticals of the human resource management functions in the organizations. But before that, what we need to understand is the changes in the perspectives of the management as a function and the way we need to take different aspects of management uh, tools into account for managing the entire organization. So when we do talk of the growth and development, the history goes back to you know, the 18th century itself, where we call it as a pre-scientific era, where the human beings were treated as like other resources, economic resources. Right? As like the other resources, human beings, the services of the human beings are procured in return, they were uh, being paid. So uh, the concept of economic man was there in the pre-scientific era, but you know, the conditions were worst and there was inhuman treatment. The conditions at the place of work were very unhealthy and hygienic and maximum, you know, uh, maximum efforts was to increase the productivity. Let's say. But with the growth of scientific era, when we have come out with uh, uh, the contribution of F.W. Taylor, scientific management. So there, you know, for the first time, it was realized that the individuals need to have specializations in their own efforts. So division of labor, the concept of division of labor was introduced. And for that, you know, somehow the efforts were given for the uh, enhancement of the productivity of those employees by enhancing their skill, knowledge, abilities in their job domain. So jobs were divided according to that, the required skills, the required abilities of the people were to be taken into consideration for enhancing the overall productivity of the organization. However, the conditions were not that conducive as we consider it today. So in the uh, bureaucratic era, itself, administrative management era. So in that era, we have uh, Max Weber's contribution was there. Some of the, no, like we do have Henry Fayol's spotting principles. And if you do make an analysis of all of those theories in that administrative era, the focus was on enhancement of efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency and effectiveness through the establishment of rules and regulations. The emphasis was given on the administration of human resources through establishment of rules and regulations. So that was the thrust idea of this administrative era. But focus was same as if we have understood that it is to enhance the productivity of the employees in the organization. Later on, when we had the Hawthorne experiment conducted by Elton Mayo, the new dimensions of human beings were found significant for the productivity of the organizations. It was observed that 
you know the human beings are made up of their own self they do have their own psychological system sociological system so human beings are to be treated as human beings human beings are to be treated as human beings that is what you need to understand so the behavioral era focuses on development of individual employees in the organization so some of the aspects like behavioral aspects like uh, you talk of their learning their perceptions their attitude development all of those things were focused and the employees you know the thrust is personal development individual development right so from the scientific era to the behavioral era you can see that there was a continuous improvement in the aspects in which we used to work on the employees not only in enhancing their skill knowledge abilities in terms of performing the job but at the same time we need to think of the growth and development of the individual employee employees as individual as human beings but if you see during this 1950s there was a shift the focus was shifted to the quality management issues we we call it as management science era where the focus was on tqa total quality management the focus was on enhancing the quality initiatives and there was a there was a uh, you know world wide recognition for enhancing this quality so we have understood many such concepts the many such concepts are emerged during that particular time may it be tqa may it be jit may it be you know zero defect programs may it be poka yoga 5a 6 sigma whatever it may be all of those initiatives were being ensured to you know to uh, meet the requirements of quality quality products and services in the organizations but my friends i'd like to tell one thing that whatever initiatives that was taken by the organization for ensuring that quality could that be possible without having a quality manpower no rough that that couldn't be possible so what is the thrust of all of those efforts is again how to make a quality manpower base at the organizations so it's all about developing the human resources so that they can meet with the standard technical aspects of the organization and they can lead the organization from the front right and nowadays we to talk of this organizational environmental theory of late we we have understood uh, during 1960s 70s we have understood that this external environmental factors do also play a very significant role in managing the organizations so organizations are constantly subjected to the change processes change in all dimensions may it be in the dimensions of products and services may it be in the dimension of the structure whatever it may be but that is what that has to be incorporated because of this external environmental factors but one thing is that even if we we say that these external environmental factors do influence and organizations need to cope with that but the problem is that is to have resistances of people human resources they are to be accommodated so any kind of change prospective whatever it may be if is adopted by the organization requires the support of those individual employees who contribute for the organization so what i want to say is that now, starting from the very ancient age till the present time if we'll see that whatever initiatives were taken by the management whatever you know theories have dominated in a particular period of time the, the moral is the growth and development of human resources in the organization we have to talk of human resources in the organization organizations have realized that the success or failure depend on the management of human resources only so 
the role of hrd in managing those human resources ensuring that these human resources are you know effectively and efficiently utilized in the organization are the key factor to the success that is what we need to understand right similarly if we to talk of the present day scenario as if we have understood in our uh, previous classes that we are living in the vuka world no volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous right but the major challenges are to deal with the human resources whatever it be right so hrd professionals whoever are the people dealing with others in the organization they do have many such bigger challenges one of the bigger challenges how do they manage this layoffs with with the growth of science and technology with the you know advancements of technology artificial intelligence when we start automated manufacturing processes automated processes so unless and until the people of the organization would upgrade themselves with the technological advancements they will become obsolete and when those people do become obsolete it happens it happens people do become obsolete so when do would the people become obsolete and we don't have a choice other than to you know remove them out of the organization maybe through various forms like compulsory retirement schemes if uh, like uh, we do have uh, you know uh, uh, the retrenchment schemes whatever it be right but they have to be removed no so you don't have a choice of sacking them out but the question is that how do we do that how do we manage this layoffs from the organization like it happened in some of the organizations like whenever they have started this layoff policy is itself you know it was observed that competent people of the organization they have started opting for laying off and organizations were left out with incompetent people i don't want those kind of situations right and whenever i do talk of layoffs i always have the resistances of the people maybe the unions will be involved how to deal with that so can there be a substitute for this particular aspect of the organization can can i have those people engaged somehow rather in the organization instead of laying them off i need to think from that that perspective also organizations nowadays have you know uh, experienced a tremendous change in the structural dimensions like we we are talking of fails what in principles no i don't think unity of command chain of command have that significant at the present days as of the earlier days no we have witnessed you know staff structure line structures matrix structures but if we talk of the present day the organizations are becoming virtual so what sort of structural modifications i should have in my organization to cope with the demand there going to be various such different kinds of organizations organizational structures right the problem is that even if i am ready to change my structure but how shall i go for fitting into those human resources in the organization structure and to take of i need to thought of that dimensions also right sometimes organizations decision making process is centralizedly located at the top but had it been a flat structure it's okay decision making process could be faster but had it been a tall structure the decision making process is delayed and the present day demand quick financial decisions so what is required the decision making authority to be decentralized to the bottom level of the organization and how should i do that how should i fix up the accountability of that those are the challenges that we do have we are talking of you know employee wellness wellness is all about being physically fit 
mentally fit emotionally fit to perform at the place of work so if a person is physically emotionally mentally fit then his contribution for the organization will be you no know, more than the others but how to create that environment how to promote employee wellness among the members to talk about and other aspects like adhering to the government regulations you now of course as we discussed in our previous class that this political government aspects are important at the same time you now the legal dimensions are also important so any kind of changes that you do see in terms of this government rules regulations are to be incorporated and that is what that you know creates a problem for us and then we are talking of adapting to this newer remote way of working and that that is what that we have witnessed in the past couple of years particularly this post covid situations right there was a complete change there was a complete change in the prospective of, of the work culture right? nowadays people are going for remote way of working right work from home concept has been you know generalized and that is what we need to understand so how, how do we manage all of those things how do we take up all of those things so that the people in the organization can be managed in a proper way that is what we need to take into consideration so let us understand the prospectives of this human resource development functions you know conducted by different organizations around the globe right and how this hrd has become significant for us we need to understand through some of the key studies that has been mentioned right so let us talk of uh, the dutch railway system dutch railway system they you know on an average process 1.3 million passengers and uh, million tons of cargo on day to day basis so beyond their you know moral responsibility they were known for their reliability they were known for the safety standards they were known for the low carbon dioxide profile so overall having a good rap so that made the organization having a demand for more and more passenger and cargo services now does railways they estimated the fourth coming 10 years time duration during which they observed that every day the you know trains need to grow by 30% to meet to the requirements of the demand of the passenger and cargo traffic by the year no 10 years down the line how to achieve that every day 30% of growth is required for this train right so they have observed that in in a manual way they cannot achieve the same what was required is to go for a digital version of managing the entire thing digital version of managing the entire thing and in the process they you know found the challenges to you know make this 700 traffic controllers whoever are there associated with this and uh, 150 operational planners so around 850 people their jobs are going to change significantly so they they then thought of you know removing them out of the organization sacking them out of the organization but the challenge was that these 800 vp around 800 vp people their jobs will change significantly with the digitalization of the entire you know, passenger or cargo traffic control system what to be done 
that is what we need to think of certain perspectives of human resource management right we're talking of human resource planning as one of the important aspects of human resource management processes what is human resource planning it says that it's a process whereby i make an assessment of the existing human resources and make an assessment of the future need of human resources then i find out a gap what is required in future what i do have in present so whatever the gap is that gap has to be bridged so bridging that gap is the challenge but whenever we do have an assessment human resource planning not only takes not only takes the quantitative dimensions into account but also takes the qualitative aspects qualitative aspects in essence quantitative part is okay numbers only qualitative aspects do i have the desired quality human resources with me in the forthcoming days do i have the human resources with appropriate skill knowledge abilities aptitudes attitudes do they have the passion for work can they contribute their best are they going to stay with me for a longer period of time right so these are some of the questions that are to be answered while you are writing the human resource requirements in terms of qualitative aspects right including turnover ratio attrition ratio everything everything has to be taken into consideration so what we need to understand what we need to do in human resource planning is not only to meet the present days requirement in sort of shortage or surplus of human resource management human resources but at the same time we need to prepare the human resources for the forthcoming requirements of the organization that is what we need to understand right so here hrd plays a very important role hrd facilitates in aligning the requirement of the ever changing world that may it be in the technology may it be in the process part whatever it may be. but the objective of human resource planning is to ensure that i do have you know appropriate number of human resources as and when required who will ensure that what tool is going to ensure that it's nothing other than the human resource development okay. we need to prepare the human resources for the future requirements of the organization that is what is the essence and we don't know what sort of you know technology or process is going to change and how, how do the organization will cope with that so hrd has to be proactive in nature okay that is what that need to be focused on. so the role of hrd is to manage the uh, you know aspects of the organization which makes the organization to go for a change and moreover they need to train the people equip the people with the demands of the organization so the thrust of hrd is always you know, enhancing the skill knowledge abilities of the people through its training and developmental aspects so we need to talk of this uh, human resource development to focus on this qualitative aspects of the job of the person the personal characteristics so some or other i may have a question give what what i need to do with the personal characteristics of a particular person the person is working in the workplace so i am only concerned for his 
output but you know having the output without integrating it with the culture of the organization the organization is not going to have it for a longer term right so that is what that in it to consider so hrd facilitates the hr planning process when we talk of retarget here we uh, you know uh, we we need to understand the second company as retarget here which is a pioneer in digital advertisement uh, right retarget they had a problem basic problem basic problem was that you know whenever they used to uh, have it in their growth phase they used to go for recruiting people to meet to the you know quality standards of the organization because they they were leading the industry of digital advertising right so to maintain that they need to have quality manpower but the problem was that they were not having you know the deeper details of the job they were not observing an you know, engagement of the employees at the place of work right so they they, they couldn't find out proper in, interaction in terms of what to be done what is being done at the place of work what to be done all of those things so without having that proper knowledge whenever they used to go for uh, recruitment itself they both both it, it was a problem for the employer as well as from the employees right so most of the time they end up in a selection of wrong people at the place of work itself so they end up with selection of no people itself so they observed that it was leading them to have wastes of time right with this informations not being properly you know not being properly accumulated ends up in wrong decision so there were many miss opportunities right so all of those things make this organization to come out with some sort of challenges first is how to optimize the hiring speed like nowadays we do talk of everything in terms of the you know the cost which is involved the return on investment roi dimensions of the organization so what are the cost involved in recruiting the people that that has to be minimized no so that was a challenge then making this candidates and like inducing to the culture of the organization making the candidates to have their professional development need to adopt the culture of respect or be a part of the team the team or all of those things can be there what is the solution to that solution is a proper understanding of the job proper understanding of the job and hrd says you need to diagnose the problem to find out the root cause of the problem right so you need to find out the root cause of the problem itself so for that what we need to do we need to carry out you know the proper job analysis method job analysis is a systematic scientific method to find out uh, all the factors that comprises the job all the factors means i am taking both those factors right like all those uh, factors related to the job all those factors related to the uh, individual human being so all those factors are to be taken into consideration right so it's a systematic scientific process of finding out all the factors that comprises the job job and human now when i to find out all the job related factors i write it down 
in terms of a basic statement that is what we call it as a job description right job description describes the basic aspects of the jobs that the individuals need to perform at the place of work right and you know job descriptions have the basic you know, or is a foundation stone of any such employee joining for any such organization in relation to his contribution towards the organization right yeah. so proper diagnosis of the problem and then finding out uh, the the you know, solutions to that job descriptions will help us in identifying all of those things hrd leads to job descriptions in terms of its action research methods and all those things to find out the root cause so without the proper job description people may not contribute their best that's what we need to understand as if in case of lost group you know they were uh, one of the biggest player in you know, the vehicle industry itself right particularly in car sector the challenge is acquiring the best right so we we have understood no? with this talent management system we are going to discuss that also like the basic administration of human resources focuses on acquiring the human resources utilizing them and then motivating them and retaining them hey right. biggest challenge is how to get good quality manpower and again when i do have an organization which is a market leader kind of thing so there i cannot you know choose any such other person to be a part of the organization unless and until the person exhibits quality right so in terms of that you need to have your recruitment processes more effective right challenges you can think of you know maintaining its operations you require you diversified people you, know? you need to have men like uh, mechanics digital managers accountants all of those diversified group of people are to be taken into consideration right the problem is we do go for a traditional method of recruitment process what it says after having a detailed job description recruitment process begins we come out with an advertisement in the local newspaper or in national dailies or in employment news in response to that you receive a hell lot of applications how many of those applications are actually valid that can be observed only after the scrutinization of the so that is simply a waste of time whenever you are talking of this traditional methods right why do go for that because there are large volume of applications even you see the applications where people assuming that or no knowing that they will not be eligible but still they do make an application of that then right? selection will be the most promising aspects of the organization right in a sense ki you need to match the profiles of the organization job and the individuals okay right? we are talking of collaborating with hr department uh, then quality of higher improvement all of those things what to be done for that we if we still carry out with the traditional recruitment process do you think we will ever be able to get over with get over from all those challenges that we do have may not be the only solution is 
we need to talk of keeping a track of all those people, all those candidates making an application. What to be do? What to be done for that? So we need to have some artificial intelligence powered recruitment system software right why the organizations nowadays they mostly outsource it to the other players like the consultancies these consultancies they use this you know ai based software to track the people right so the role of consultancies are growing role of consultancies are in demand at the present time but organizations need to update themselves if they would like to enhance their productivity right so we are talking of this you know automated processes right that saves a lot of time and you know improves the candidates experiences also and will help the organization in terms of achieving its objectives so artificial intelligence based recruitment system you can think of that right similarly if you to talk of uh, the other vertical training and development we we need to understand we, we have already discussed it in our past classes but we need to talk of the uh, case study of this infosys right so the key functions of hr department is training and development what is you know uh, required and how that thing has to be provided to the organization right we we need to talk of that so it's not about looking into the hr department only but many other departments you know they in consultation with the hr department you know, they also focus on the implementation of right training and developmental aspects okay. so what is the challenge challenge is to design any such training policy of the organization that will ensure quality first but that will also you know integrate the daily operations and strategic development so at one point of time when we to talk of day to day operations of the organization which is more skill based right the other hand side we are thinking of the strategic level of goals of the organization right which is based on the leadership abilities of the organization so all those things at, at the same time when we to talk of managing the skill the other hand we need to manage the abilities leadership right judgment and decision making process all those personal characteristics right so that's the reason why infosys they have made it in uh, uh four different levels right so one is that the training and development requirements have to be taken from the performance appraisal system so the objective of performance appraisal system is not to appraise the people for their personal decisions promotion demotion etc but to understand where the employee lacks in terms of his skill knowledge and abilities and provide the required thing to the employee we are talking of this training and development which aspects are to be always taken from the performance management system the question should not be like uh, why a person has not contributed towards the profit of the organization the question should be what we should do with that particular employee to facilitate him to contribute right we are talking of uh, training need identification most of the time these managers identify the training needs at their own end but in process no that has to be identified mutually right? we need to talk of that chart out the development strategy itself from starting from the top level manager to the bottom level manager each and every manager they need to be a part of the training program right proper career enhancement through the mentoring system is there and at least they need to ensure five such mandates 
training per year to each and every employee. Right? So different training programs are scheduled on the basis of that. What to be done? So we, we come out with, you know, uh, the traditional methods of imparting training. Right? We say on the job training and off the job training. When we are talking of this off the job training, it's okay. We are talking of uh, you know, case studies, live experiences, right? and uh, the training is beyond the you know day to day work life, so people can concentrate. Right? But moreover, the increasing complexities at the organizations nowadays can can be assumed that this off the job training programs be good solution to us may not what is required is to adopt you know the technology and transition from that traditional learning to digital learning. So what is required is the digitization of all those processes. Okay. So nowadays we do focus on LMS, learning management systems, or LCMS, learning content management systems, right? So these are the systems which can be taken into consideration so that you know, the people of the organization can contribute their best efforts, right? Performance appraisal, I was telling you, right? It all has to be based on the demand of the organization, not on the demand of the individual. So when we do talk of this AM consulting organization, so they work predominantly with uh, certain projects and uh, the overall work expectations, role expectations are Predefined, but whenever we do talk of this role and expectations to be predefined, it has to be based on projects itself. I don't think this will help us to accomplish the said objective of operation. Right? So, what is required is to make individual employees accept the goals in line with the organization. So it's not about developing the efficiency of the employees. It's about developing the ownership. Okay. So when the goals of the organization are to be decentralized to the bottom, right? And these goals of the organizations Uh, will be based on the kind of plan that you have, the strategy, right? When that goals of the organization is decentralized to individual department, then by uh, decentralized to the individual employees. So that creates a level of ownership. Okay? We, that, that's the reason why we need to ensure that you know, the employees of the organization, they really bother to take care of the cause of the organization. This has to be followed by some mid-year reviews or end-year reviews, right? So organization do come out with quarterly reviews, monthly reviews, which will ultimately lead to the annual reviews itself, right? So performance matrices are to be clearly spelled out. Employees must know what is being expected from them. Otherwise, there will be a problem. So we, we, we say that, you know, uh, three different uh, roles are being played by the employees in the organization. One is a expected role. One is a 
actual rule right was enacted okay so expected rule is what the organization does have from the employees in terms of expectations what the employee has but from the organization in terms of expectations employees expectations from the organization organizational expectations from the employees right so if the expected role doesn't match with the enacted role what the person actually is doing in the organization i have been told to do a list of things but when i was assigned with the job i am observing that i am doing completely different set of work so when there is a mismatch there will be problem right so what is required is the exact you know descriptions of the job that the individual need to perform okay so that has to be clearly spelled out that is why goal setting process are to be taken as a meticulous process with mutual agreement right so that will uh, uh, create or this performance management system should have been integrated with this training and development system career system compensation reward system each and everything and when we do talk of hrd i understand that how this hrd plays a very important role in the organizations we come to the aspects of this uh, compensation development when we do talk of the basic case as kpmg right a uh, leading consulting firm of ua right they were thinking of the or taking care of the well-being of the employees we have discussed that no employees wellness employees well-being where employees are not only you know physically fit they need to be fit in terms of their jobs right in terms of their uh, like performances itself so what is required their emotional involvement whether they are emotionally stable what is required whether their uh, skill knowledge abilities are there to help him in terms of his goals right so those are the things we need to take into consideration so when i am going to talk of the employees involvement in the process we say that employees are mentally physically socially financially sound to contribute towards the organization right but the challenge is how to you know take care of this employees will be now kpmg has come out with many such you know uh, innovative approaches of that right as it the pension program with single automatic company funded contribution which is equal to 6% to 8% right so that provided job security to the individual employees right three weeks of additional care giver leave is granted to the individual employees 12 weeks of paid parental leave are given to the employees they have expanded their holiday calendar also okay so what is what is important is to understand that the role of hrd is very important in terms of providing the you know the physical the mental social cultural financial well-being of all the employees if my employees are you know satisfied then they can take for the cause of the organization if employees are not when we to talk of this compensation itself we you know we we somehow rather refer to the motivational theories itself we say you know Uh, Maslow's need priority model, as if we do understand. So the lower order needs, like physiological safety, social needs, lower order needs, higher order needs, like actualization and uh, esteem needs, right? Lower order needs to be fulfilled first, 
than the higher order units. Of course, there is no such hierarchy. But you know, we need to understand one thing that achievement of both the needs are equally required. Achievement of both the needs are equally required. So when you do think of you know, fulfilling your lower order needs, you think of money or direct monetary benefits. When you think of fulfilling your higher order needs, you need to think of other aspects of compensation, such as recognition programs, reward programs, right? And the objective is to get the employees involved, right? So whenever we to talk of this HRD system, they do play a significant role in the compensation dimension. We are talking of diversity management and uh, the inclusion of diversity for our organizations. Always we do have a question within us. Whether this diversity is required, whether it is essential, what are the benefits of this diversity? What will happen if I will not have this diversity? My friends, now it, is, it has been an essential part of the business organization. Right? Like that, that is a part of the strategy of the organization. What to do with that? That will help in improving the market share reducing cost, increasing productivity, improving the quality management, creativity, innovations, inventions, all of those things will be there because of this diversity. Because, you know, when I do have a diversified team, basic definition of team, what it says? People with complementary skills, can form the team. So a diversified group of people do have complementary skills. Right? So both are required. We say how HP has achieved its objective through the diversity programs itself. And they, you know, they, in the 70s and 80s, they have started with the initiative of recruiting from the college. So student network experience programs were there, black managers network. That, that was there, right? And they focused on group discussions to attract women and minority category from the from the college days itself, right? Students, you know, even black managers, like in terms of black people we are talking of, and women and minority, right? So during 1990s, they have started a worldwide campaign for this diversity itself. Right? Come up with Black Employees Forum, Revised Policies on Diversity, Defund of Hearing Forum. They organized many such conferences and diversity initiatives in Asia as well as in Europe itself. Right? So that facilitated HP to upgrade itself in terms of the requirements of the organization, right? And according to that requirement itself, this diversified group of employees are to be finalized, right? Another one important dimension is this employee engagement concept when we talk of this employee engagement, like we are, we are talking of this uh, high hospitality, right? Group of hospitality. They, they do have more than 600 properties in uh, more than 50 countries where, uh, you know, more than a lakh number of people are employed. Okay? But the basic challenge is the development of ownership within the employees. Okay? Employee development and promotion from within itself. So, how many number of employees are really being concerned for 
having the ownership. Thank you. And they were also, you know, worried for the high rate of employee turnover, which is a normal characteristic of this hospitality sector, hospitality industry itself, right? So as such, there was high employee turnover. Employee empowerment was observed to be a key element. And what was observed is that you know, the employees were not empowered to take up the day-to-day -day decisions or day-to-day -day work of the organization. Right? And with the characteristics of the industry itself, you now an ongoing training opportunity was required. What was the contribution of HRT itself? Now, the concept of engagement can add value. We need to think of the engagement as a process to add value to the existing systems. But how can it be possible? We say that engaged employees, they will be proud of their organization, they will be satisfied, committed, they will have praise. Right? So they do reflect uh, words of passion, willingness, working relationships, commitment, all those things. Right? But do we think that this engagement of the employees will be possible without empowering them? Will that employee engagement be possible without developing that sense of ownership? Not possible. So, through its efforts, HRD can focus on development of ownership, which will em empower the employees having that ownership, you know, to exhibit their commitment and satisfaction towards the organization. Okay? Thus, this engagement also requires a huge efforts supported by the HRD initiatives. We are talking of ethics. Now, everywhere we are talking of this ethical dimensions uh, to be considered first beforehand. But here, we to focus on certain aspects like Austin's codes of ethics, they say there are three such important benchmarks. Like first, how many employees of the organization do validate the interest of the organization before validating the interest of their own? This, this is a normal phenomenon that we do come out with each and every organization, right? People are highly concerned for their own benefit than the benefits of others. People are concerned for their rights, but no one is concerned for their duties. So we need to promote organizational citizenship behavior, OCBs, we say organizational citizenship behavior is what is required and HRD focuses on that. We are talking of duty to the society, decision making that has to be based on facts, not on values. Value based decisions involve emotions, but we have to be highly specific in terms of taking a correct decision. So it has to be based on facts. and. Organizations are bound to be guided by this national and international laws, policies, plans, rules, regulations, whatever it may be. Right? So, we, we come out with uh, some standardized organizations like World Ethics of Forum, which works throughout the world to promote ethical practices around the globe by different organizations. But as such, we need to think of implementation of the same through various HRD initiatives. And towards the end, we do come out with this uh, HR analytics, right? 
Teacher analytics plays a very significant role at the present time because the decisions are so complex that unless and until we do have these decisions based on data, it will be very difficult for us to manage the entire thing. We have seen transformations from HRM to HRD to HR accounting, right? HR audit, but you know traditional principles of accounting having a merger with HR. We discovered that HR accounting, but it's not that effective. What is required is to have proper analysis of the causes and the data itself. That is it. At Experian, when they had a turnover more than the expected as 3 to 4 percent, how to reduce that? Unless and until I do have sufficient data, I cannot take a decision of my own. So only thing that helps to implement all of those aspects is this analytics, HR analytics itself. Right? So data classification, association, clustering mechanism, all of those things are included there to take proper decision. So friends, let us end it over here. What we have discussed is HRD as a whole plays a significant role in terms of making the organizations to achieve its competitive advantage by managing the human resources in terms of their competences, commitment and boosting an organization culture itself. Right? So that is how hope these sessions were uh, effective and uh, this would uh, clear all of your doubts. So thank you very much for having your patience for all those 12 units we have under HRD. Thank you and once again we will meet you with some opportunities today. Thank you.